This is the second and more formal part of the center's relaunch. And um, I have a few uh, things I want to say just to describe some of the things that are happening, but also to give you a bit of a perspective on things. So um, it was 35 years ago today, or not today, this year, in 1984, that the center was officially launched. It was an auspicious start year to start a cooperative research center. It was near the beginning of the big push forward towards um, what we now think of as neoliberalism. Uh, these were big policy changes around anchored around balanced budgets, monetary targeting, uh, sh shedding crown corporations, shrinking government, and of course trade agreements. It was also the year, of course, when everyone fretted over whether, was, whether there were signs that the world described by George Orwell in his book, 1984, would come to pass. Today, I think in some ways that dystopian future, future seems more present than it did then, at least to these eyes. Um, you've got The Handmaid's Tale, another dystopian novel that's now a popular TV show, and of course Margaret Atwood has just written a sequel that's earned her a shared Booker Prize, and there's no shortage of zombie apocalypses to keep us busy. Uh, so pop, popular culture at least looks like it's forecasting a, a kind of doom, um, but there are also kind of, I think, real world signs of of dystopia. It's hard not to worry about environmental uh, crisis, economic uncertainty, geopolitical tensions, income and wealth inequality, and other kind of deep social fissures. So things seem to be pulling apart, and that was a bit of our conversation earlier, um, at the very moment when in some ways we need to be pulling together a little more. And I don't think that's a coincidence. Uh, and in fact, I think that that kind of tension between coming together and pulling apart uh, actually gives me some optimism because that, that, that tug of war um, to me is a bit like when the center was relaunching itself. It's just like 1984. We have these big changes that are afoot. Uh, today, um, some of the changes that were happening then are kind of reversed, right? So we see deficits back on the, tab on the, on the discussion table. We have trade that seems to be um, getting restricted, um, lots of geopolitical tensions. The federal government now has a pipeline. Um, all these kind of things that were kind of going one way then are kind of going a bit the other way now. So it's a kind of a really interesting timing for us to kind of relaunch the center. It's also a moment, I think, when people are starting to look around for new ways of doing and thinking about things, ways of working together. And that's, part, that's especially why I think I have some optimism, notwithstanding all those real, real challenges. Um, it's also a, a moment that I think we can think about in a positive sense, because I think there is a cooperative impulse in all of us. I think the, the recent research suggests that this is as much about who we are as kind of a selfish who we are all, uh, that the economists tend to posit. So I think there's uh, a good reason to believe that there's these competing impulses and, and the cooperative one is, is important. Um, now before I, I kind of introduce our, um, introduce our next speaker, I want to acknowledge, as Jen did uh, much more eloquently, um, that we are on Treaty 6 land. Um, and I take that to mean, and this is, this is something um, I'd say relatively new to me, coming from Ottawa, it's not something you hear quite as much as you do here, uh, but I've learned to start thinking about that as something um, that amounts to a responsibility. Uh, we can't just acknowledge the fact, we have to think about how we want to make it real, right? How we want to enact that. Um, and I think of it as a, a lot of, in a lot of the same ways I think about cooperatives, as an intergenerational trust, a commitment to work together, cooperatively and in respect of this place that we call home. So uh, it's also important, and I, Jen also flagged this, that I think um, these are a lot of the values of cooperatives, of course, uh, but it's also important to recognize, uh, recognize that cooperatives haven't always lived up to those values, particularly with respect to our, our Indigenous um, peoples. Um, and there's good research now from people like Ushnish Sengupta that have helped us see how cooperatives have played a role in colonizing this land and marginalizing indigenous communities. Uh, but I also know that today's cooperatives, certainly the folks that are here from the cooperative sector, uh, take reconciliation very seriously. And I intend to as well, for as long as I'm in this place. Um, now, the center, it's not just me, right? There's a, there's, a folk, there's a team of people here, and I want to just briefly acknowledge the people who've helped make this event possible. Uh, first and foremost, Jen, who did a wonderful job introducing their panel. So a little round of applause for Jen. Um, so Jen's our newest and I think most brilliant researcher at the center and uh, just a real privilege to work with her. So thank you, Jen. Um, Erica Schindel, who's not here today, but she's our comm specialist. She's helped design our new logos and our new uh, look and feel. 
uh, and she did a wonderful job for us, and I just can't thank her enough. So I just want to flag the, the wonderful work that Erica did. Amanda White, who maybe isn't in this room, but she's made the trains run on time, making sure that we get the food, the video, the setup, all that stuff working. Amber, uh, who's also not here, but Amber's done a masterful, like she's a superhuman manager, that's how I think of her. Uh, Murray for being so supportive and wise and helping, me convin helping convince me to do this improbable thing of moving to Saskatoon. Uh, I wouldn't have put this on my calendar three years ago. Um, Brett, Zion, Audra, Vic Audra from Quas First, Victoria from SCA uh, for, for, for being part of the center and supporting the center. Mitchell for making time to come and support this event. And of course, Melissa for making her way here um, in this cold but beautiful place. Um, so these folks have all made possible our relaunch, but I also wanted to just uh, flag some of the things that have kind of come out of all that collective effort. Uh, we have a new name now. We are officially the Canadian Centre for the Study of Cooperatives and we, we want to do that to kind of capture the fact that we have a breadth of supporters now from not just in Saskatchewan but across the country. We also want to put a, a stamp down to suggest to the world that this is the place you come to if you want to study or learn about cooperatives uh, in Canada but elsewhere as well. So that's, that's what we've done. We've changed our name to the Canadian Centre for Study of Cooperatives. And you can see it here, and you can see it out on the murals out here. I just want to point out that we have now new murals with new signage acknowledging all our funders, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. And we have a new website that's uh, a little more integrated into the Policy School website, uh, but that, that just kind of underlines the focus that I hope to take the Centre down towards, which is really specialising in work around the intersection of policy and cooperatives. When I worked at the Credit Union Association, this was a major gap couldn't find anyone who was doing really serious policy work around cooperatives, um, and I think there's a big hole to fill there, and I want to be part of that, uh, filling that hole. Um, I've seen personally firsthand how the rules, those rules, there's ones, those ones, um, shape so much of what happens out there. Um, I also want to flag that we have a, a new serialized book on the history of the center uh, by Merle Massey. I don't know if Merle's here today, but I don't think she is. But Merle, she's done a masterful job of writing a history of the center from 1984 through to today. Uh, and we're going to release chapter by chapter with cliffhangers and, and exciting, <laughs> as exciting as a, as a history book, no offense, uh, as, as exciting as a history book can be. Uh, we're going to do it. And we have our wonderful Nora Russell who's uh, editing that for us. And we've released, I believe, today. Prologue during chapter one, yes. Cliffhangers. With cliffhangers. So. Yes, go to our website. Um, we have a, uh, with, with Co-ops First, we're going to be launching a new online course called Co-ops 101 uh, later this month, and I'm um, really excited about that. We also have ambitions to migrate our certificate program. We have a certificate here through the JSGS to a purely online option, so people don't have to travel to Saskatoon to do, to get an accreditation. So that's something we're going to hopefully achieve in the next year or two. Um, and then we have a whole whack of research that's coming down the line. Um, and some of you I need to talk to about this research, but on governance, we have a survey that we've completed. Some of you have completed that survey. Uh, we're going to police a report probably later this fall, early next winter. Uh, I'm personally doing work on deposit insurance. I hope to be doing work on taxation, uh, social innovation. We're talking to Employment, Social Development Canada about something right now. And we have a lot of projects uh, on, the, on the boiling plate um, that I hope to see released in the next year. So uh, before I wrap up, I have to give a special thanks to our existing, and I want to, our new existing, existing and new funders. I'll just flag them very quickly, but they're out there, they're here. Um, the cooperators, United Farmers of Alberta, I think Brett mentioned the UFA earlier, uh, Concentra Bank, Credit Unions, Like, Affinity, Mark's here, Conexus, Neil's here, Alterna, they're not here, but they were here in spirit, Manitoba Credit Unions, Kawartha, uh, Van City, Coast Capital, and uh, eventually more if I'm halfway successful. So there's, uh, we're getting more credit union support, and I'm very happy about that. I think there's a lot of work we can do to, to provide um, valuable research input to the sector uh, and to the cooperative sector writ large. But I need to single out our most steadfast supporters from the beginning of time, eight, 1984, through to today. Um, they are the University of Saskatchewan. It's been with us from the beginning and federated cooperatives. Um, never wavered in their support of the centre, and we are extremely grateful for that. So with that, I want to actually turn over the microphone to Scott Banda, CEO of FCL, 
Um, as I understand it from reading Brett's books, <laughs> uh, Scott has made the cooperative identity a big part of FCL's mission, and uh, we're grateful for that kind of leadership. So, Scott, if I can have you up and say a few words, please put your hands together for Scott. Got an extensive speech here. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. How are we doing? All right, still a little energy left in the room, you know, and I've got to uh, acknowledge first and foremost that Harold is here. <laughs> and uh, Harold and I have a long history, uh, a history of discussions uh, over the years, and it's, I don't know, Harold, if I've been in front of a co-op audience that you're not part of. So it's, uh, <laughs> I do appreciate uh, seeing you here today, but I want to, on behalf of Federated Cooperatives Limited, first of all, welcome everybody here today. Happy Co-op Week and happy 35th anniversary to the Centre. That's an amazing achievement. Um, and as, as indicated, Federated Cooperatives has been here uh, from the start, and I was asked to say just to make a few comments about our commitment to, to the Centre uh, over the years. And when you think back to 1984, uh, which I can, and frankly I think I know six of the eight <laughs> people in the picture, because I was at the U of S at the time, and I remember there's another individual that uh, had a little bit of influence in this project by the name of Dr. Leo Christiansen. And I would have been sitting in his Economics of Cooperatives and Crown Corporations class at the, exactly 1984 as this was, was about to come to fruition on campus. And it's remarkable how old some of us have become. Because <laughs> uh, I thought that was like 20 years ago. But it's not. It's been, been a very, very uh, a long journey, but a great journey. And we've been here. Uh, from the start, and, and I can't comment on what would have motivated Federated Cooperatives uh, specifically at the time, but generally I, I can say, as I am joined today by one of our board members and our former chair of our board as well, is that, you know, Federated Cooperatives is a large business. Let's just get that on the table. Um, you don't do ten and a half billion in business and say you're, you're not big. And, th and that masks sometimes what goes on within an organization underneath the surface. And the co-op principles have always been important to our, our retail system, the cooperative retailing system. And my guess would have been, like it is today, that we have a lot of people on our governance side of our organization, particularly within our employee base, that understand fundamentally what it means to be a cooperative, understand the importance of community, understand the importance of making your community better than the way you found it. And as a result of that, we also had a whole lot of folks that were very, very familiar with co-op principles, and I think that would have been very, very simple. Uh, when you look at education, training, and information, and that, the importance of that co-op principle, that if we're going to, going to step forward as an organization and create an organization right here at the University of Saskatchewan, that we needed to be part of it. And I'm very, very proud uh, to say that we continue to be part of it. We have supported it, and I would also suggest people understood the importance of education. They understood the importance of principles. They understood the importance of academic work in that regard. And that doesn't happen by accident. It takes an investment in people, takes an investment in time. And I think over the years of the history of the center, uh, the work in the academic purposes, the theoretical, but I always remind people at the center, and we've heard it over the years, make sure we're practical as well. Because at the end of the day, although we're funding this as Federated Cooperatives Limited, it's not our money. It's our members' money. And for us to continue to invest members' money in any uh, venture, we have to be able to explain that value proposition back. And it's not a hard one to explain when you see the quality of work that's been done by the Centre over the ge generations almost now, uh, the various pieces of work, that that's what makes it exciting. And I have a ton of optimism about the co-op model and about the co-op sector in general. Uh, it's complex, it's diverse, it's full of issues as a sector. Within the model itself, there's tons of issues, and some of you watched as we aired our laundry here, our dirty laundry here today. <laughs> I did sit on my hands, so I can answer a lot of the questions. And, and, and I do have some perspectives on, on, on some of those questions, but but to take that for what it, what it is, which is, um, you know, I've described within our world a federation. Federation of cooperatives to me are just elastic balls, balls made of elastics. And we keep wrapping another band on and wrapping another band on and somebody comes and cuts one and we wrap another and we cut. Well, in our organization, somebody came with a knife and cut a whole bunch. 
So you're now at that point in history, that critical moment where do you let that ball fragment or do you galvanize as a group? And it's going to be an interesting academic study. Unfortunately, I'm part of it. Uh, I'd rather observe from the outside just to see how that works and how a system responds um, when, the, when the chips are down. And that's where we're at as an organization. And it's a, it's a fascinating time, but, a, but an exciting time. But as I've said many times, uh, my belief in this model, I grew up in a, one of those families that co-op was my whole life and always has been. And my commitment to it uh, remains unwavering because it is the best model. It is the best model if we want to balance economic, social, and sustainable organizations. And we try to do that all the time at Federated to invest for the next generation and the generation that comes thereafter. And our recently renewed vision for the organization of building sustainable communities together is what unites us and drives us each and every day to make a difference. Um, to make a difference in our members' lives, to ensure that this model does survive and it will survive. I'm, I'm so committed to that, and I know people will come together, but as in any democratic organization, it's critical that discussions and conversations continue. And I know that's what the center is about. The center has been at the heart of sparking those conversations and facilitating those conversations. And I know for the next 35 years, or maybe longer, uh, when we're back for the, for the next anniversary, um, to continue those conversations. So uh, again, thank you for allowing me a few minutes just to say a happy anniversary, happy co-op week, and it's been our distinct pleasure to be part of the journey of the Canadian Centre for Cooperative <laughs> Studies. Thank you.